Let's do it. At this race is tough. I fell I don't know how many times. Of course, in the toughest moments, my friends, they cheap. I travel from the Netherlands to Czech Republic to tackle my first solo off-road ultra race, Bohemian Border Bash, one of the toughest self-supported off-road races in the world, 1,300 kilometers and 24,000 meters of climbing following the Asian borderlands of the Bohemian Via. So we are here at the Bohemian Border Bash camp. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, excited and uh, a bit scared to be honest. <laughs> My first off-road race. Not a mechanical expert or gravel rider, but uh, let's see how it goes. I have the feeling there will be a lot of drama. Start here at the campsite and now time for dinner. Here are the cabins where some of the riders are staying. Pre-race dinner. Good morning, race day. Uh, it's very humid and uh, I don't know what to expect. Somebody said a lot of animals already on the way, so <laughs> it's gonna be an adventure. Let's do it. Here we go. First kilometer. The start of the race was very fast with tarmac sections and light gravel. Riders were fighting for position and of course you had to defend your space on the trail. There were a lot of twists and turns, so it was a bit tricky to find the way sometimes. Hiking grass. <laughs> progress 142 kilometers on the way to checkpoint one not sure no, no. Yeah? Yeah. So beautiful this area, I must say the route is really beautiful. So maybe to checkpoint one, ah, got the stamp, now the fun start, the fun part starts, checkpoint two. Ooh. After CP1, which was a village, the field was more spread out. I managed to get there during daylight and I uh, took my stamp and decided to continue to get uh, to CP2 at night. So, just did checkpoint one. <sighs> Let's see. Ultra sunrises. Huh? <laughs> Just when you need it, they put some food before this. Oh, oh. Wow, magical sunset. Huh? But this race is tough. I feel I don't know how many times. Uh, good night, it's uh, midnight. I made it to. I'm gonna have a nap and then continue. <laughs> I'm a bit tired. CP1 to CP2 was a dense forest. By the time I arrived to checkpoint 2 was at night, but before it there was the ghost 
checkpoint so you could sleep there there were some riders sleeping there taking a nap and i decided to take a three hours nap before continuing to cp2 which was a rock in the middle of nowhere in the mountains and there was a long hike bike to it Point two, in the middle of the night, very challenging with this hike bike. <sighs> Another checkpoint. I was uh, there in the middle of the night alone in the forest and I was so scared. It was my first time alone in the forest riding my bike, but I managed to find a kind of a trail. I didn't know what it was because you couldn't see anything. I was like, okay, just follow the line. Ah, good morning, day two. Oh, really exhausted. That's what you have to cross. Them. I don't know how much walking I'm doing today, but it's more walking than riding. <sighs> that on a gravel bike. I don't know. Not many places to resupply on Germany during Sunday. Checkpoint two. No, three. <laughs> Again in the night. Now in the area of the Bohemian Forest, I spent all day trying to catch up to the First Lady, Ursula, and I actually bumped into her in one of the hike by sections and she was super nice, we had a quick chat, but I decided to make my move and try to be first at the third checkpoint. After a few hours, I finally reached it. Now I'm gonna look for a hotel and decided to take a long sleeping break of six hours and I got overtaken by her again and other riders. So when I woke up, I was like, okay, back to the chase. Good morning, day three. <laughs> My son, Sherry Sherry lady. Oh, frozen. I just came down from the mountains. I was like, so humid. Oh listen to your hands all the humidity and it's so cold from the gas station having a coffee and trying to recover movement in my hands and warming up shopping on the day on the gas station even for a seven day croissant this year style <laughs> and of course Haribo Removing the layers from the night.
you have a lot of hats and places to stay, seems that there are somebody had champagne. I mean, hiking. The beauty of ultra cycling, you see places like this. I got out of the trail and then all of a sudden I saw a lot of people with selfie sticks and I was like, okay, there must be something amazing here. And I arrived to the CP4. So it was the UNESCO heritage site of a Seski Krumlov, super beautiful medieval city. And there was a bike store. So I decided to stop there to repair my derailleur hanger. I spent all day with only three gears and resupply on as much gels as I could carry. Hi, a checkpoint? Checkpoint. Stop. Ah. Checkpoint? Is this the checkpoint? At a bike shop I crash in the mud in the trail, so I bend my derailleur. Let's see, it's not shifting well. I'm trying to see if they can repair it and find the stamp because I cannot find it. Checkpoint three or four, I think. <laughs> Keep on hiking and uh, avoid interest. Ultra hack using the aero bars to dry your beep shorts. made it uh, to Gumon now trying to resupply wood <laughs> now the route follows the Eurobello iron curtain let's see Wow, so beautiful all the time, uh, ups and downs. But today is really nice in general, but the hike. Checkpoint five, trying to find the stump. Always uh, difficult, so beautiful here. I continue from uh, CP4 to CP5, which was again in the Bohemian forest in the mountains. It was super nice, beautiful between Germany, Czech Republic and Austria. Finally make it to checkpoint five. That was a monument of the Iron Curtain. So you could see a lot of remains of the previous border, the Iron Curtain. It was very interesting. Wow. Orange sunset. <laughs> That's what you deal with at night. Yeah. 
gonna place to stay for tonight. After checkpoint 5, I decided to continue. It was the longest stretch between checkpoints from CP5 to CP6, so 232 kilometers in between them. And I decided to stop in a pension at night and had a really nice dinner. And again, a few hours of sleep was uh, super cool. Grass riding, bumping to a friend. <laughs> Hello, uh, yeah. we got lost in the trail. <laughs> Sometimes you bump into lots of people. <laughs> How is it going, man? Good morning. I'm making progress. And um, now, let's see. Step by step, but off road is really different. Day four, more hiking than biking. In other points of the agenda, after grass riding, full of plants. Does it make you more aero? What do you think? <laughs> Made it to checkpoint six. Always, when you think it's not, it's not gonna be bad, then there is a hike a bike, and then you lose all your schedule. But making progress slowly but surely. Smash it! <laughs> <laughs> Twenty gels or more. <laughs> After the checkpoint, trying to fix my bike and resupply. Let's see. Checkpoint 6 was the scratching point. It was the last time to scratch from the race because then you head towards the high mountains in more remote areas. But I was like, no, I'm going to continue. Again, I bent my derailleur hanger, so I stopped in a bike shop to repair it and resupply on gels again before heading to the Eagle Mountains. Again, magical sunsets. Checkpoint. Seven, I think, <laughs> in the night. Managed to reach CP7 at night, a monument of the soldier in the middle of the mountains again. And I was like, okay, time to continue because I have to make it to Poland to try to find a hotel where to stay. And I actually managed to overtake the first lady when she was sleeping. She stopped before CP7 in a village and I continued towards Poland for a hotel and decided to take a few hours of sleep because I knew the next day would be climbing up, 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 up towards the highest peak, so yeah, a tough one. Good morning, Dead Five. In Poland, in the mountains, the most beautiful sunrise. Wow. Sending an actual river bed. I'm happy I have suspension. <laughs> The stamps for to sell validate in some checkpoints like this CP8. So, supermarket break, <laughs> retired. I mean, literally, you have to push your bike over about. Seriously. Are you fucking kidding me, guys? Shit. 
Time for hike a bike. There was a super steep hiking section, so I decided to use my hike a bike strap. I brought it with me so I could mount it on my bike and put my bike on my back. Finally, making some progress after falling several times. The way up to CP9 was really tough. I spent all day climbing up, hiking. It was really tough to reach the highest peak of Czech Republic, 1,600 meters of elevation. And I started seeing ski slopes and it got really cold. And I was like, oh my God, I have to make it out of here before the night because it's gonna be freezing. Yeah, that's for skiing, the highest peak. Brutal. Of course, in the toughest moments, my friends, they cheap. Checkpoint nine. Let's do it. We're too hard for this view to let it be go. Wow. So I managed to go up and down on the same day and I reached CP10 in the middle of the night, which was a river bed, super humid. CP11. <laughs> no, 10. Now to our CP11. The bridge collapsed. After the river, you had to cross a bridge, but the bridge collapsed and I was like, no, it can't be true. What do I do? So I decided to take my hiker bike strap and just cross the broken bridge. CP level. Jesus Christ, the humidity. <gasps> and I decided to pull my trump card. Not to sleep at all during that night. I slept all other nights, but I knew Ursula was on the chase, so I wanted to have a chance, uh, a shot to win the race, and I continued riding through the night. And that's why I brought the hiker by strap. Much faster. <laughs> it worked. The last kilometers are always the toughest. I was like, okay, you have to keep on going. There's uh, somebody on the chase. And I bump into one of the other riders and he was like, the other riders are chasing you. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I have to hurry up. So we were kind of racing each other to the finish line it was uh, super fun. It actually motivated me. I just finished Bohemian Porter Bus. Cannot believe it. I'm first woman. I crashed like uh, six times this morning. I don't know. Didn't think I would make it out of the mountains. Uh, I learned how to gravel ride, mountain bike, everything. <laughs> We were fortunate to meet her several times on the course. And, you know, uh, I have such a huge respect for you. Uh, you are so strong rider. Um, yeah, you always <laughs> smiling. It was amazing, it was amazing. Uh, Sherry finished the race in 124 hours and 58 minutes. Nie, nie dachy, 
Sword for the winner!